Kevin Manning is a longtime character and 3D artist in both the gaming and film industries, working on titles such as Red Faction Guerrilla, Alpha Protocol, and Fallout New Vegas, along with countless other projects. So to begin, I asked Kevin when he joined Obsidian and about his responsibilities during the development of FNV. I started at Obsidian in 2007 as a character artist after leaving Volition during early production of Red Faction Guerrilla. Back then, the studio was wrapping Neverwinter 2 in pre-production of Aliens, eventually cancelled, and at Vertical Slice for Alpha Protocol, which was when I joined the team. When Fallout rolled around, I was lucky enough to be one of the first artists moved over and the only character artist for, if I remember correctly, the first two months of pre-production. Working on FNV in the beginning was a mess. It was old tech, harsh limitations, and really a challenge to get each asset working as intended. My responsibilities included modeling, texturing, skinning, and implementing character and creature assets as well as developing and maintaining asset creation pipelines to be used by other artists. We actually didn't have a lead character artist on the FNV release, and after filling that hole for most of the production, I was promoted and given lead credits on all of the DLCs. During production, however, I had my fair share of help pushing the project through completion. Daniel Alpert and Chris Willis joined the character pit to generate the billion character assets needed for launch. Next, I ask about crunch and cut content during the project. Crunch happens pretty often, especially when you have a project you are passionate about. I was never asked to stay late or work weekends, but I certainly did. The sheer magnitude of assets that were created in order to get FNV out the door was staggering, and without extra effort from the whole team, it would have never made it. Honestly, I have no recollection of anything that was cut from the character side of things. Though I'm sure there was, I imagine it was more a sigh of relief than a stress point. Moving on. I ask if working on FNV changed his approach to game design. Working at Obsidian and on FNV changed everything for me, really. It was a different time in gaming, and my first project that I worked from concept to completion on. Honestly, I think every project shakes your core in some way or another. That's the fun of it. I learned a tremendous amount about the industry, my discipline, and how to make great games. From what I was aware, Kevin created the renders of Securitrons and Night Stalkers, along with the majority of New Vegas' outfit and weapon models. So I inquired about which assets he created, as well as if any of them required multiple revisions. Oh man, I worked on so much on that game, but unfortunately, I was not responsible for Night Stalkers. That was either Chris Willis or Daniel Alpert, and we couldn't have done any of it without the support of the amazing Brian Menzi, concept art lead. I was, however, responsible for Mr. House, Rex, the Securitrons, the Great Cons, the Boomers, the Strippers, the NCR, Caesar's Legion, Powder Gangers, Ghost and Dead Money, most of the player outfits, and a ton of weapons. My favorites were easily Mr. House, the Securitrons, Rex, and the Ghost People. Securitrons took a few passes for sure. I built out a high-res model, textured and iterated on it, with Brian Menzi and Joe Santabria for a while, before we were ready to build out the low-res and get it over to animation for rigging. We didn't have a ton of time to iterate with our aggressive schedule, but we found time to dump love into every asset. Next, I ask about his process for creating character art. 
My process usually starts with a bio, then either myself or a concept artist takes a pass at visual design, which is then presented to the art director, discussed, and revised. That process can be quick or have a million revisions, but the main goal is to get to know the character and get as much of their story into the world through their design as possible. From there, I block out the major forms of the character and create a proxy mesh. This model represents the silhouette and joint positions, so that the rigging team can begin constructing the rig and animators can get to work on base animations. From there, the proxy mesh is refined and detailed. Once a high-res slash detailed version of the character is approved, a low-poly game mesh is created and baked from the high-poly. Another approval happens. Next is texturing and materials, which usually takes the most time. They need to be created and tested in the game engine to make sure the final look and the final lighting is achieved. Then the model usually gets sent off to be attached to the rig and handed off to the animation and design team. As far as software goes, I use Maya for modeling, ZBrush for sculpting the high resolution mesh, and Substance Designer and Painter for materials and textures. Next, I asked Kevin if he could talk about his style as an artist. Oh man, I love everything. Hand-painted, self-lit characters from WoW or League of Legends, to the realism of Uncharted or Tomb Raider, I really couldn't pick. What usually happens is that whatever I'm working on during the day for work, I switch styles on personal stuff. Like right now I'm working on more toony exaggerated stuff at work, so my personal work is more realistic. During a performance pass, many of New Vegas' textures were lowered in quality, props were removed, NPCs were disabled or cut, etc. So I asked Kevin how console performance affected his character art. Optimization is one of the most complex processes in development. So many factors need to be taken into account. Trade-offs have to be assessed, and decisions to cut or reduce the quality or quantity of certain assets for better performance are inevitably made. I could dive into this more, but we would be here for a long time. One fun part of developing for consoles and PC is the drastic differences in processing power and memory from one to the next as well. Nearing the end of our interview, I ask what it's like to have worked on Fallout New Vegas. Being part of the Fallout family is an honor, really. The people I was lucky enough to work with, I consider family, and we are all so humbled by the fan base that I really have no words for my gratitude. It is a surreal feeling to think of how many people love something I was a part of and how many people it touched. Finally, I asked Kevin what projects he was currently working on and where fans could find his art. I am currently a senior character artist on Gnomes and Goblins by WEVR, a VR project headed by John Favre. I made the leap a few years ago to go full-time remote contracting and move back to my hometown in Michigan, and it seems to be working out pretty well so far. My work can be found on my website at rebeldevelopment.com and on ArtStation at ArtStation static. Also on Twitter at Twitter slash static CU. You can find links to Kevin's incredible work below. Fallout New Vegas has emerged as a classic for a variety of reasons. One of those is undoubtedly the NPCs and factions themselves, and Kevin Manning was responsible for bringing many of them from concept to reality. Despite the limitations of consoles, he created evocative models that grounded the lore and backstories of these characters and groups, 
making him one of the unsung heroes of one of the best games ever made.